Good day to you all and welcome back to the Lair of Centipedes. And as you can probably already tell, this video is going to be all about what are perhaps the most unique and fascinating animals I own. This remarkable little creature here is called a velvet worm, named because of their, well, velvety texture, which should be pretty obvious here. They comprise their own phylum, the Onychophora, which are closely related to the arthropods, albeit still separate groups. After a failed attempt to keep them in the past, I decided it was time to give them another go, and this time, so far, I am having a lot more success. Velvet worms are cute, exceptionally cute, but there are still things that are cuter, and one of those is a baby velvet worm. And if you don't think they're absolutely adorable, then you can go back to the darkness from whence you came. Oh, and I almost forgot, what else is cuter than a velvet worm? A whole bunch of them snuggled up together. Velvet worms, in fact, seem to be fairly social animals. And in one species, Euperipetoides raulii, a social hierarchy of sorts has been observed, with adult females being dominant individuals and usually the first to feed on a kill. And yes, if you weren't aware, in spite of their very benign appearance, these animals are actually pretty voracious predators. They have even been said to prey on funnel-web spiders, and while I do have the means to test that, I certainly won't. But how? How does an animal that basically looks like Grandma knitted you a toy centipede to play with take down anything, let alone a funnel web spider? Well, let's just say these little fellas are all about concealed weaponry. And it's one of the most unique weapons in the animal kingdom. When the velvet worm's antennae detect its prey, a pair of appendages behind the mouth called oral papillae fire twin streams of a viscous, glue-like substance, which rapidly solidifies in the air, entrapping the prey. And the more the hapless victim struggles, the more it becomes entangled. But in spite of their surprisingly formidable status as predators in the invertebrate world, they are completely harmless to humans. Their incredible hunting behaviour is something I have witnessed a couple of times with these, but unfortunately not something I have yet managed to capture on film. But I guess that day will come. Eventually. I will make that day come, I promise you guys. Now I've been feeding my velvety little friends cockroaches just like I do for the centipedes. But the problem with velvet worms is that they are very messy eaters. And any leftovers, and trust me there will be leftovers, are likely to get mouldy and velvet worms are not fond of mould. Two solutions to that that have worked for me so far. One is springtails which graze on mould and prevent it from becoming too established. The other one, which seems somewhat counterintuitive, is to feed them fairly large prey. That way any leftovers they leave behind are likely to be much bigger and much more easily noticed. So when it's time to clean their enclosure, I don't have to scour it too much. Another important factor that needs to be paid attention to if one intends to keep velvet worms, especially the southern species, is temperature. Velvet worms do not like it hot. Some people keep them in wine coolers. Me, personally, I just keep ice packs adjacent to their enclosures, in fact, partially underneath them. Sort of like a heat mat, except the exact opposite of a heat mat. And in order to maintain the coolness, I rotate the ice packs twice a day and keep the entire setup inside a cool bag. Now, it is winter in Australia at the moment, so keeping things cool isn't much of a challenge. But it is likely that I will have to replace the ice packs more frequently once the weather begins to warm up again. So, while I'm not going to get too cocky and claim success just yet, things are looking pretty promising at the moment. And with that, I think it's about time we wrap up this video. And I'm sorry this one is rather short, in fact very short compared to my usual uploads. And that is courtesy of the fact that I have my final exams coming up in a couple of days, so, you know, priorities. 
Now, if you find my content interesting, then by all means, check out some of my other videos. Not much stuff on velvet worms, but plenty of other invertebrates. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching this. That is it from me, and until next time, farewell.